Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be continuing a series I started a couple of years back looking at what the budget radio scene looked like before manufacturers such as Bofeng came along and saturated the market. So in previous videos we looked at the Yingtong radios and the standard C408 which came about in the mid 1990s and I'll leave links to these videos in the description below. But today we're going to be looking at the Maxon FRS214. So this is an FRS or family radio service radio that originated out of the United States in the mid 1990s and I was looking in the Ringway Manchester vaults for something else and decided to pull them out and show them to you. So family radio service is the US derivative of PMR446, a free walkie talkie radio allocation for license free short range communications between 462 MHz and 467 MHz. And much like PMR446, the FRS band in the USA has been overrun by business users and is really busy. I don't have an exact date of manufacture for these radios, but FRS was launched in 1996, so I'd guess it not long after that. So these radios are complete with the boxes which state that they come with a leather case included. I'm not sure what happened to these, but if they're anything like the faux leather mobile phone cases from the 1990s, I'm guessing that they perished a long time ago. The box also advertises a two mile range, which is actually doable. The radio outputs 500 milliwatts or half a watt, so in an open area or from high ground you could exceed this range quite easily. And the box does say that the range will vary depending on terrain and environment, which is true. So if we look at the specifications you can see that the radios operate on 14 license free channels, there's no monthly payments, they have cellular styling, in other words they're designed to look similar to a mobile phone, which I can see. They have a scan function, user programmable private channel codes or CTSS and a backlit LCD display, as well as a keypad lock, last channel recall, battery save, auto squelch, and they take four AA batteries and came at the time with a one year warranty. So as you can see, my models are actually new old stock. They've never been used in their almost 25 year lifetime. They have a speaker on the top, an LCD screen underneath, and a rubberized keypad. And on that keypad, there's a tone button, which when pressed, with a TX and RX button allows you to select CTCSS on or off and choose the tone that you want. There's channel up and down buttons for selecting your different channels and the transmit and receive button doesn't do anything on its own. The scan button allows you to scan through all the channels in the radio quite quickly and the power button is obvious and the lock button locks the keypad which is handy for children. And CTCSS turns the CTCSS on or off, but only after this has been configured in the previous step that I showed you. There are volume up and down buttons and a backlight button as well on the bottom. At the bottom of the radio is the microphone. There is a charging port on the bottom for an optional charger and an ear speaker port on the top for the optional speaker mic. The antenna is a screwing style cellular looking antenna and I'm not actually familiar with this connector type and on the back is the battery compartment which fits in four AA batteries. Now Maxon advertised these radios as ideal for many different uses such as amusement parks, beaches, bicycling, boating, campgrounds and you can see the pattern form in here. It's an alphabetical list of potential uses and I quite like the neighbourhood watch group functionality. The list ends with zoo as you can guess and much much more. Now the FRS band isn't allocated in the UK at 462 to 467 megahertz is in the business band allocation here in the UK so these are technically not legal to use over here but we are going to do a small test with them anyway. Now I live in a rural area surrounded by hills on two sides and I'm going to take these handsets to a place far away from any local allocations for FRS channel 1 just to do a quick audio test for you so it is just an educational test. So we'll leave the camera recording the radio and see what the sound is like from radio to radio. I've also got the 5100 in the shack recording on the external antenna because we will go further afield and just see if we can get back to base. Hey, this is a test of the Maxon FRS214. On channel one, the Maxon FRS214. On channel one, one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, this is a test of the Maxon FRS214. On channel one, the Maxon FRS214. On channel one, one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. This is an audio test. This is an audio test of the Maxon FRS214. On channel one, 
1-2-3-4-5-5-4-3-2-1. This is a test of the Maxon FRS-214. This is an audio test. This is an audio test of the Maxon FRS-214. On channel 1. 1-2-3-4-5-5-4-3-2-1. This is a test of the Maxon FRS-214. Okay, so I've just come a little bit up the road to some local parkland. Obviously these are only low power, but we are going to do a transmission test back to base. Uh, I have got the Icon 5100 recording on the relevant frequency, because I'm not sure if the handheld will pick it up here, because they don't have a small antenna, it's in the house, on the desk. Um, but yeah, what we'll do is we'll put a call back to base and we'll just see what we pick up. This is a test of the Maxon FRS 214 out in the park. An audio test of the Maxon FRS 214 out in the park. Audio test 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll quickly nip back up to base and we'll see if we manage to make it back to uh, the radio that's monitoring. This is a test of the Maxon FRS 214 out in the park. An audio test of the Maxon FRS 214 from out in the park. Audio test 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, so a nice little performing radio there. I should point out that the quality on these is really good. They're not designed as kids' toys or a novelty radio. They do seem like a higher-end two-way radio, which works really well. The audio on transmit and receive is good, and they're rugged and have a rubberized trim all the way around, which will protect them a little bit if they're dropped, and they do feel nice and weighty in the hand. So, hats off to Max on there with the FRS214. Now, if you enjoyed this video, then stay tuned, because we'll be looking at the LPD433 counterpart to this radio, in the next video, that is the Maxon SR214. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any comments, suggestions or questions, then please drop them in the box below and I'll get back to you. If you haven't clicked the subscribe button, make sure you click that. And all that's left to say is 7-3. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.